let's go ahead and jump in. I know I'm sure some more people are going to be trickling in here over the coming uh, few minutes here. Um, first and foremost, my name is Joshua Johnson. Uh, I am uh, the VP of Enterprise here at Deal Machine. So I run our enterprise business for the, the members that we're working with that are trying to do two plus deals each and every month uh, with Deal Machine and our different products and all that. Joining me is Brent Daniels from TTP. If you don't know him, I would be surprised. Um, Brent's been an awesome partner of ours for literally years now at this point. Um, and we, we've seen him from his, I feel like his first like couple dozen members that joined TTP that just absolutely smashed and killed it to now he's helping. I don't even know how many people at this point, but helping people build the business from the ground up successfully by talking to people. It's the most apropos name I think I've ever heard uh, in existence. Um, and I'll let him take it over a little bit, talk a little bit more about his background, why he does what he does, what he actually does. And then we'll open up and slide in the Q and A after that. Love it. Is that my cue? That's my cue. Okay. <laughs> listen, we're talking. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to open this up the way that I do with every time that I have the ability and the fortune to uh, be on in front of the deal machine family here. It is the fact is 80%, and this is across the country, 80% of people get their first deals from their driving for dollars list. That is a fact. Listen, I've got people in every single market. I've got people DMing me. I've got people commenting on YouTube. 80% of people get their first deals from driving for dollars. Okay, listen, it's not rocket science, right? There's properties out there that need some love. There's you who wants to find these deals, talk to this homeowner, and then depending on what your exit strategy is, maybe you want to fix and flip, maybe you want to wholesale, whatever it is, now, now you've got that opportunity. You're having that conversation with the property owner, and now you have all, every single avenue. So if you, listen, we've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We've read Think and Grow Rich. We've done all these things, right? But we need to know how do we find these deals? How do we get discounted properties? Find an ugly house, have a quality conversation with the property owner, and now you are in the driver's seat. Most people that I know kind of go towards wholesaling to start building up some income so they have the money to be able to purchase these properties or to do something special and rehab all these properties. But for the most part, Finding the deal is like 90% of this business, okay? That is the foundation of our business is finding the opportunities. The best way that I know getting going, getting started I, is, is Deal Machine. It is Deal Machine and that's whatever. I mean, it's not an ad because we're with the Deal Machine family. So, I mean, that's just the facts. And so I encourage you right now, the big challenge is you need to be adding a minimum of 100 addresses to your Deal Machine account every single week because the fact is and you can correct me if i'm wrong uh guys here uh 300 addresses is what it takes to get a deal okay 300 addresses where you're continuously reaching out you're constantly having good quality conversations building a relationship with the owners of these properties and over time about 90 days is what i found 90 days of consistent activity with your 300 as you're building 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 all of a sudden you start getting deals and then all of a sudden you're going and you've got an opportunity and you make 10 15 20 thousand dollars you're talking about it at birthday parties or barbecues or dinners out with couples and everybody's like what are you doing i don't understand you you were just doing this other job a second ago and now you're finding deals that are paying you this much what are you doing how do you find it what is going on you you become a magnet for the people around you and that is so exciting and that's really what it's about. It's, it's, it's about building in a system where you're talking to enough people on a daily basis to where you can truly change your financial trajectory any way that you want. Obviously, hopefully up if you're being consistent and you're, and, and you're going after these opportunities. So um, really in this, and, and real quick before I really get, really go bananas here on this for the next 10 minutes, I want to, if you guys, listen, if you guys have found a deal, you've closed the deal, you've done a deal, I want you to put it in the comment section. I don't care if you just locked it up today. I don't care if it was three months ago. If you've done a deal, I want to know how much you that you did it and how much you made in the comment section because this baby right here needs to be rung. 
Okay. I want to celebrate your success because the fact is there's a couple hundred people on here. We are a small niche group of people. We're, that's the facts. We are small. There's what? 350 million Americans. There's 19 million people that are considered real estate investors in the United States. And even a smaller, smaller, smaller portion of that are people that want to go out and find those deals that aren't like through a real estate agent. It's not like they bought a house and then they moved into a bigger house and now they rent out that house. People that want to be real estate entrepreneurs. It is such a teeny niche of people that you you are so special because you're like me. You're like all of us on here. We're just different. Our brains are different. We have a fire in our belly that cannot be stopped. And we want to be real estate entrepreneurs. We're freaks. We're different. We're different than everybody. I go to like a family event. Nobody does real estate. I do. You guys do. That's why I love you. That's why I want to share that. And I want to celebrate your successes that you're having and inspire other people that they can do it too. This isn't rocket science. Ugly house. Have a conversation, lock that deal up. That's what it is. And I don't care if you're sending out mail. I don't care if you're picking up the phone and calling. I don't care if you're door knocking. I don't care if you're trying to uh, find some way to find that property owner through uh, DMs on social media, whatever it is, whatever creative way that you have for finding these opportunities, you need to start that conversation. But what it comes down to is three things. Okay, we need to we need to talk about three important things on this conversation before we open it up to questions. And that is whenever you're up against this challenge, this challenge of finding the most discounted properties in your marketplace, the challenge of growing a real estate company, of being a real estate entrepreneur, the three challenges are either internal, external or philosophical. Okay, internal. Do you truly believe that you can do this? Do you truly believe that if you talk to enough property owners that are in distress and you really have a caring heart and you're really there and you're really working with them and you're really helping them solve this problem, do you believe that you can build a business this way? Do you believe that you can be successful in this? Do you believe that you have enough time in your schedule to fit this in? Do you believe that this in your mind is your real job and whatever else you're doing right now is just a placeholder until your income becomes enough for you to replace your current nine to five, right? That's the internal, the external. Who are you surrounded by? Are people, do people understand the language of real estate? Do people understand what you're trying to do? Do people understand that you're trying to find these opportunities and they support you and they love you and they understand? Are you surrounded with other successful people in this business? Are you squatting up with other people in the area that are going to cheerlead you? That's the external part. Remember, we, we become the people we surround ourselves with. And if you're like me and you're obsessed with finding real estate opportunities, you surround yourself with people that are obsessed with real estate opportunities. And it's been a little bit goofy with uh, the pandemic, but now we're starting to open up. Now we're starting to you know, get belly to belly, face to face, knee to knee with people that are freaks like us that want to find really great opportunities around the country right? That's the internal. I mean, that's the external. And then the philosophical. Do you believe that by your efforts, you are doing better for your fellow community? Do you believe instead of, hey, I'm going out there and I'm going to make 50, 100 grand and I'm going to buy the flashy stuff and I'm going to do the great stuff and it's all about the hustle, baby. It's all about that money, baby. Or do you have the philosophy that there are, and this is statistics, all right? Six to 10% of the real estate market is in distress at all times. That's who we go and talk to. They're not going to solve their own problems. They need somebody to help them solve their problems. Are you going out there almost like a missionary going out to try to help people that won't help themselves? Are you trying to serve the community and make these houses that are a blight on the community, something that's beautiful, something that's artistic, something that's unique, something that grows up the popularity of an area or a neighborhood or the school district or the hospitals or the police or the fire department or everything. It all comes from real estate. And you are standing on the edge of this with the opportunity to find these. What if you go with that philosophy? 
What if that philosophy is the thing that's pushing you forward when you're tired after work? What if that's the philosophy that gets you on the phone at 9 a.m. on a Saturday to noon trying to find opportunities? What if that's what's pushing you to go meet strangers, even though you feel like you're timid and shy and I can't do it and I'm, I'm an introvert, Brent, I just can't do it. But if you push, if your philosophy is stronger, that you know that you're going out to serve the community, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. And you have that confidence inside internally that you can do this and you have other people around that are doing it and supporting you. How can you fail? Seriously, how can you fail? You literally cannot. And that's the message that I wanted to put out there. This is an incredible opportunity for everybody out there to find these opportunities and to work in your community and really make a difference. And I want to encourage you that. And I want to give you the confidence in that. And I want to give you the certainty in that so that you can just go out and just do what you do, which is talking to people, having quality conversations with these distressed property owners and helping them out. And then from there, it just goes and goes and builds and builds and builds. But it starts with finding an ugly house, talking to the property owner, and making something happen and solving their problem. And that's what's so beautiful about Deal Machine. Deal Machine literally makes it easy. There was no Deal Machine when I was starting out. It makes it so much easier. We used to have to write down the address, go to the county recorder's office, and then the website and find these deals. Now, with the click of the button, you can have their phone number, their email, their address, know if it's occupied, know if it's vacant, know if it's a tenant occupied, know if it's owner. All of these things with the click of a button for whatever, $50 a month, it's bananas. So you've got the tools. You've got the mindset. Now it's just time to unleash you onto the world so that you can go and make an impact. And that's it. Uh, that's it. So we go home now. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can, no, I mean, so we can open it up, but that's, yeah. that's really, that's, that's what we're talking about. First of all, do you see these deals? Are you guys seeing these yeah. deals? Oscar, Lu there. Luis, Derek, everybody. Yes. I love it. So many congratulations deals. guys, everybody out there. If you are uh, scroll up and down, cause a lot of people put where they're located, make sure if they're located by you, you are reaching out to those people and you're squatting up. You got the first and last name. I'm sure it's not too hard and just maybe may send a little message here in the comments, uh, connect with them so that you are uh, you're adding everybody to your core group of, of people that are doing stuff in this business. Absolutely. Uh, quick plug on the Deal Machine Facebook community group too. That's where a lot of you guys probably already see each other's names. Beautiful. Um, jump in there, uh, chat, ask questions. Like we've built that community of now over 10,000 people for that exact purpose. Awesome. Um, so, uh, I mean, I don't know how else we can open this much better. I really appreciate that, uh, that Brent and just going through like how to be successful in this for a lot of people who are oftentimes on this conversation, super early stage in the business. So um, yeah. And if you don't mind, Josh, I'll give just some tools just so that everybody's on here and refresh and it's kind of hot. And it's like the most people are on here. Uh, the, the website talk to people.com or TTP insider, either one, probably TTP insider guys. If you need scripts, if you need resources, downloads, how to do um, a lot, if you are a wholesaler, this is going to really help you out. If you're not, you can definitely call. I mean, uh, definitely get the, the, uh, the calling script that'll help anybody do whatever, but but uh, there's some resources for you. So definitely check that out. And uh, we're open to questions. I want to hear it. I want to hear what the struggles are. I want to hear what the challenges are. I want to hear what the, you know, what's working, what's not. Um, that would be really cool. Absolutely. Yeah, and I appreciate the, those resources. AJ is going to drop them into chat for us here in a moment. Um, so look for those specific links uh, in there so that we, we can make sure you're getting those resources. I mean, things like scripts and stuff like that make this game that much easier. It kind of takes away your, your concern of like, I don't know what to say in this situation or this situation. It really is simple in the end. Like Brent said, it's just, Hey, I might want to buy your house. You might want to sell it. Let's, let's just chat about that. Let's Here's roughly it. what I might want to buy it at. <laughs> Uh, Listen, if, if you're talking to new people every single day that are, that show some signs of distress, obviously you're adding them through your deal machine app, you're going to win. I mean, I don't care if you, uh, speak a different language at some point you're going to fall into opportunities. I mean, it's that it, it's, it really doesn't have to be complicated. The thing that complicates it is our own brains. 
is our own, you know, the, the little transitions in life, right? When we go from our job, we go from being a, a dad for, you know, the last hour we drop off our kids, we got to transition into, okay, now I got to hunt for opportunities. And as long as you're aware of the, that transition, you can make that smoothly. As long as you're intentional about that transition, you can make it smoothly. And then you can get in and, um, and start having those conversations with the, with the people that own properties that need the most love in your, in your neighborhoods. Absolutely. Uh, Elise, we got any questions? Anyone, any people that want to raise your hand if you have a question, by the way. Um, I love that question. What, what, what do you say if they think that you're a scammer? I love that. Listen, every time somebody is, is, is challenging you and you're having a conversation, you confirm what they say, you approve what they say, and then you hit, you ask them a question. You know what I mean? Oh, I understand. You're probably getting a lot of calls. That's I know that that's super annoying. Um, but have you thought about selling your property? You know, I'm local here. I live by you. I live down the street. I'd love to give you an offer. That's how you handle those type of things. You don't say I'm not a scammer. No, not a scammer. Click. No, just confirm. That's the way that they're feeling. They're feeling like something is off there and it's your job to be able to make them feel more comfortable with you. And mm-hmm. a lot of that has to do with your tone of voice and your ability to react as they're throwing things at you. 100%. Ariel, yeah. Ariel Molnar, it looks like you, uh, we, we elevated you to a panelist. So if you still want to ask your question, if you want to unmute and then maybe get your video on, uh, we'd love to have you ask your question so we can talk through the challenger or uh, whatever your question is. That'd be awesome. Ariel, the floor is yours. Ariel, Ariel, right? Oh, yeah. oh. Anyway, well, I can go. tell you what her uh, their question was: how mm-hmm. how do you convince a seller to go with you in with you instead of listing um, another way like the MLS? I love it. I don't ever. You don't convince anybody to do anything. Listen, we are deal finders. We are not deal creators. Okay. If they, if, if it is in their best interest to list with an agent, list with an agent. Okay. What we're talking about is people that want to trade potential equity in their property for speed and convenience. Okay, whether that be a deal that you you want to do cash or whether that be a deal that you do uh, from a creative standpoint, it just depends. But if it's better for them to list it, list it. Remember, you don't want to be chasing the dog. The dog will always run away. You want to be walking away and it's going to follow you, right? Not saying that owners are dogs. It's just an analogy. But it's 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 if you're trying to convince somebody to do business with you, you're not talking to the right person. You're not, it's like dating, right? Like, oh, I'm going to convince this person to fall in love with me. And they're like, dude, you're like the grossest dude I know. I don't want to fall in love with you, you know? And you're like, no, 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 I'm really cool. Look how cool I am. Look at this great stuff. Look at all these things that I have. And they're like, no, it doesn't matter. I just don't like your face and your, and your body and your, your nose or whatever. (laughs) Who knows? You know, like it just, you're not going to make something happen there. You're a deal finder, not a deal creator. One of my favorite opening questions is, this is an incredible house. Why, why don't you just throw it on the market and, and list it? Or why would you even want to sell it? Get them to tell you why they want to sell the house. And then they might say, you know what? We actually have an agent. We just talked to her about to do it tomorrow. Like those are things that are going to happen. And when you get like, they then know like, hey, they're not just here to try to convince me and create a deal. Like you said, Brent, they're, they're here to like diagnose the problem and see if it's an opportunity. That's uh, it. And that's, that's really what you're trying to do. It's a, when you talk to, when you call somebody up and you ask them if they would consider an offer on their property, there's only six responses they're going to give you. Right. And three of those are some form of yes, which is surprising. Right. The first one is just a straight up. Yes. Yes, I would. The second one is how much will you give me? It's kind of a yes, but it's more like a, you know, throw something out and, and see if it sticks type of thing. And the third one is maybe, but just not right now. We're thinking about it, but we're just, you know, maybe in the future. The fourth answer that you get is straight no, right? No, I never want to sell this. The fifth response you're going to get is, how'd you get my number? And the sixth one is, who are you? 
listen, if you, if you know the responses to those six responses, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable and confident. And then when you get a property owner on the phone with you, every conversation that you has only comes down to four things that you're trying to find out the condition of the property, their timeline to sell that property, their motivation and their price. That's it. Those are the four things that you're trying to find out. So every time you're asking questions, it's around those four things. Just make it simple. This isn't, this doesn't have to be complicated. You can do this. You can do it every, I mean, this is plain language in a lot of ways because you're just asking somebody about the condition in their property. And a great question there is what remodeling have you done to the kitchen and bathrooms in the last five years? I love that. And Isaac, I love you for saying I have the best hair in real estate. Thank you. I don't know. AJ's up there, man. AJ's looking good today. Look at all that hair. Look at all that cabbage. I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, listen, if, if you are asking the questions, remember, a lot of it has to do with your tone of voice and the way that you're coming across. If you sound like you have no energy, if you sound like you're tired, if you sound like too bombastic, like I'm being right now, then it's not going to work. Just you got to, you got to see how people are responding and watch your tone and watch your pace. Mm hmm. hundred percent. All right. Let's move to another question here. Uh, Rado McInar, McInar, Um, If you want to drop your mic and your uh, video, we'd love to have you come in and ask her a question here of Brent. Um, and just a heads up for anyone that we escalate to, if you're ready for a video and um, Mike, that's always great too. Hey there. Hi, Brent. Hi. I'm how are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I am excited. Thanks for being brave and coming on here. I love uh, listening to you on um, your podcast and it's changed my life. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm going on? My fiance and we just started our wholesaling business. So um, one of the questions I have is we tend to get a lot of leads that seem to be interested, but for us, we don't think it's a deal and something that we can necessarily uh, work with. Okay. So I'm wondering in that scenario, do we continue to follow up with the seller? Do we give an offer to that seller or what would we do with that lead? A couple of different things. I mean, you just have to put them into like three different buckets. And this is the three buckets I would look at. I would look at, is this a potential wholesale deal, right? Are, are we kind of close on numbers, but we're just, maybe the timing's a little bit off. Is this somebody that I want to follow up with? That's the first one. The second one, once you get, the second one, I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to go into because it's like the creative bucket, right? Where you can do some sort of creative financing or maybe a subject to type of thing, but that I find that as you're building your, your wholesaling business in the beginning, I like staying super focused to people that want cash offers, but that could be something that, you know, maybe you develop or maybe you just have a passion for and be able to find that, but it's not really tremendous amount of income generating. You can lock up a deal, a creative deal or a subject to and, and wholesale that deal to somebody else. You're not going to make as much as a traditional wholesale, but you'll make something. And then the third one is refer it to an agent. And um, you can get a referral fee if you have a license or if you have somebody on your team that has a license, right? So okay. you can run it through somebody that runs it through somebody or you can just get licensed. Are you licensed? I am not, no. Okay, that's fine. Well, you can find somebody, maybe a friend or something that you can send that to. And mm -hmm. maybe they just, maybe they hook you up with, um, listing flips in the future, or they bring you deals as a referral on properties that are really beat up. They understand that you're, you're going to be able to do something with those. Um, but that's really the thing. Remember, don't force it, right? You're going to have conversation. You're going to find so many opportunities that it's going to blow you away when they're like, oh yes, I do want to sell. And you're like, okay, great. Uh, the way that we buy it is we purchase these cash. We pay all the closing costs. There's no real estate agent fees. The best part is we, you don't have to put another cent. We buy it completely as is. So for an offer like that, how much would you take? And then they throw out something like 125. You pull up that Zillow, it's at 240. And you're like, oh, this is the one, right? You don't have yeah. to force anything. They're nice to you. They're being cool. They're giving you the price. They're doing all these things uh, that, that are kind of showing signs that they would do business with you. That's what you're looking for. Just don't force it. When, whenever you're, whenever you're worried about a certain lead or a certain opportunity, it's because you don't have a lot of them. 
right? If you only have three or four leads, you mm. love and cherish these three or four leads. You never want to let them go. Yeah. But <laughs> if you have 400 leads, then all of a sudden it's different, right? That's yeah. great. Thank you so much, Brent. You got it. Thank you <laughs> so much. And just take action. I mean, you're the hero, right? It's just, I, I just, I'll, I'll be your guide. I'll give you the tools, but you got to go out and do the work. So incredible. Uh, I love that you and your husband are doing it and uh, just keep it going. Just remember, just stay, stay each other's like foundation, right? Just support, support, support every day, every call, every situation is bringing you closer and giving you more experience. And you're going to look up six months from now and be like, oh my gosh, what the heck was our life before this? You know what I mean? Let alone five years, let alone 10 years. So keep grinding, keep going. Great. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Awesome. Great question. Again, love the early stories of people getting in and cutting their teeth on real estate and make, building the business. Uh, we've yeah. got Ryan Navarro in here uh, with another question. Ryan, and I don't know if you're ready or not, but uh, hopefully you are uh, to drop your, uh, put your mic and computer or and video on and uh, uh, give us your question. So we got Mike not video yet. And I want to give, if Mike is, or Ryan is, Ryan, are you there, bud? Maybe it's a weird connection. Do you yeah, mind I, do. I just don't know how to do it. Hello? Oh, hey, Ryan. How are you, bud? I'm good and you. Awesome. Thanks for being on here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, yeah, I just have problems like um, <clears throat> around my area. It's just um, a lot of vacants and a lot of property that people just hold in. So some of them pop up that they're absentee or vacant, but there's people living in. How do I go about that? Do I still give them? Do I still give them a call and try to you know make a deal with them? Yeah, Ryan, where where what market are you in? <laughs> Wholesaling. I just I just started. I'm looking no, for I'm my sorry, first what deal. What city? What what city? Oh, um, Mount Pocono, Scranton. Okay, MPA. got it. Yeah, yeah, I know where you're at. So here's the thing. If you're, those properties are fantastic to go over. Remember, you want to, you want to, are, are, are you going to be reaching out? Is your marketing strategy or your, your lead generation strategy to call them up? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So Deal Machine has all the phone numbers there. What I would say is make sure that you're adding them, getting the phone numbers, and then um, calling them up. If you can get a dialer, that's the fastest way to call them. Um, okay. But if not, if you just want to stay super lean, just call them and just just pick up the, I mean, just, just hand dial them or just press the button on the app and it'll call them. Um, but really, you're just trying to get a hold of the homeowner. And then okay. once you get a hold of the homeowner, they're going to give you what's going on with that property. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, don't yeah, worry definitely. about the people living in it because who knows? Maybe they're squatters, maybe they're renters, maybe right, they're whatever. Right, right. But just you want to talk to the person that actually owns it because that's the person that has to sign the deed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just started calling last week and I got my first no. So I thought the, 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 the no was going to be a little bit more hard on me. But once I got that first no, I was like, wow, it's not that bad. Let me call the next person. <laughs> Ryan, listen to me. I talked to 45,000 homeowners, okay? I got about 44,800, no, 44,500, let's call uh, no. How do you keep like, your cool you. With, the, with, with, the, with all that going on? How do you keep your cool? Well, listen, it comes down to, again, it comes down to the philosophical point that was going in my, I knew that these people needed help. I knew that the, the property owners that, that couldn't take care of their properties uh, usually typically put their head in the sand and they don't like making decisions and I want right. to help them out. So um, I just, I, it was that. And also just like internally, externally, I was broke. You know what I mean? Like I was right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wanted to. I wanted to change my financial situation, so I was going hard at it. And it was like, what's the worst they can do, Ryan? They're not going to find your address, drive to your house, and punch you in the face. You know what I mean? They're, they're just not. <laughs> right, just right. Not, what's the worst that can happen? They're going to get mad and hang up. You know what I mean? It's just. I just got one more question. I'm sorry about that. Sorry to cut no, you no, off. go for it. All right, the pre the the the, the pre foreclosure, right? Now I know I know the best ideal uh, percentage that you're looking for is around forty, right? Forty percent equity on a yep. pre foreclosure. Now, yep. how would I go about handling that with the title company? I know it's not a regular assignment contract if it's a pre foreclosure, correct? 
It is. It, it's exactly the same, brother. So, okay, and I will have to add the the, the what they owe in in um nope, in mortgage nope, payments. In, nope, okay, you don't have to do any of it, Ryan. Listen, this is what happens. You go to that pre foreclosure. They've got equity. Let's say that they owe a hundred thousand. You're able to give them a hundred and twenty thousand, and the property's worth two twenty five. Okay. Okay. Right. So. They go into the title. You 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 put that property under contract. You give that contract to the title company. The title company then reaches out to the property owner, gets all their information, and gets what's called a payoff statement. So with the funds that are coming from your contract to buy that property, that pays off their mortgage, that pays off their late fees, that pays off everything that they owe on that. Those people walk out with a little bit of money. You assign that deal to somebody else. That person buys the property. You get the assignment fee. Easy peasy, wow. simple, clean. So don't worry about if they if they have equity, you're, you're gold. Right. If they have equity right. and motivation, those are the two things you're looking for. You, you, you're, you're going to crush it, brother. Yeah. You so guys remember, are amazing. Ryan, we, our job is to find the opportunities. Our job is not to do the title company's work. Right. Our job is not to like, you know, get all the personal financial information of the seller. Our job is to get a piece of paper called a purchase agreement signed by that, uh, by that property owner and turn it into title and then find an opportunity. And then you can do whatever, but if you're wholesaling, then you uh, find somebody that wants that contract from you and they'll pay you to get it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Great. Great. Hey, listen, there's a lot of misconceptions out there. That was a really great question. If it has equity, go hard, Ryan. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. You got it. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Awesome question. Oh, thank you. All right. It looks like uh, we got the next question already lined up. Jeremy, Let's maybe, go. Uh, Jeremy, if you want to jump on, I uh, would love to hear what, what it is that we can help with. Jeremy, you are live. Can we get some can we, a lot of peer pressure? Jeremy? Let's hit that fog machine. Boom. Come on. What is going on? It moved the computer screen. Did you see that? I, did see, I saw that. <laughs> Jeremy, hey, looks Jeremy, like there, buddy. Are you able to show this screen, Matt, real yeah. quick? I want to just do this while we're waiting for Jeremy. I want to show something real quick for people. When you are, can they hear me? We got you a little bit. You're a little soft now. Okay, hold on one second. Can you hear me? This is, can they see it? Can they hear me? Can you hear me? It's a little bit fuzzy. Yeah. Oh, hold on, we're connecting. Uh, so I just want to give people a really easy way. If people want to get a quick idea, if they've got a deal or not, or they've got an opportunity or not, I want you to use this simple equation. Okay. And um, we'll put it on ARV at 250. If the ARV, if you look it up on Zillow, if you look it up on Redfin, if you look it up on Trulia and the ARV is 250,000 and they're pushing you for, uh, is this a deal uh, or pushing you for a price? What I want you to do is I want you to multiply whatever that number, as long as it's over 250,000 by 0.65. All right. By 65%. Okay. By 65%. That's the rule. If they're about around that price, uh, you've got a great opportunity. Okay. If it's below 250, I want you to offer 50%, 50% below 250. All right. And, uh, and, uh, AJ, if you could put that in the notes or Elise or whoever, um, in the notes, that would be really helpful because that's, listen, when we're starting out in this business, guys, we all know the toughest part is deal or no deal, right? Is this a deal or not a deal, right? That's the most confusing thing. Do I have an opportunity here? Am I going to be able to make some money? And sometimes what we do is we go, hey, like I will literally make anything on this deal. It's my first deal uh, and I will literally make anything on it. And then you have somebody that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a thousand bucks for this deal. And then they make 40,000. And the reason I talk about this is my first three deals, I... They assigned it for more than I did 
for $92,000 worth of, of, uh, of wholesale fees or assignment fees because I deal or no deal. So that's what I want to do. I want to remedy that. So when you do find something that's close to that, you've got a really, really, really good opportunity uh, to get a good amount on your wholesale deals. A $10,000 minimum is what I would put in there. $10,000 minimum. All right. Awesome. I, uh, I noticed in chat, uh, I don't know if John or Jeremy rather is um, having issue on the, uh, the microphone. He wrote his question about asking about finding a closing agent. Um, and I guess speak a little bit to that process and when agents do or don't come into the equation and stuff like that. So I assume he's talking about an escrow agent, right? Somebody that's going to do the title and escrow or a closing attorney. It just depends on what state you're in. You can do an easy Google search and just find out, are you in an escrow and title state or do, does it require a closing attorney? And what I would do is I would find any local uh, REI group on, and that stands for real estate investing, REI group in Facebook. I would find um, in uh, your city. And I would just make a post and I would just say, Hey, um, I'm looking to find the best escrow and title officer for whatever, for wholesale, for flips, for double escrows, for double closings, all these things. Um, and then see who responds and then see how many people like the, that response. And, and, and then you're going to get a good idea of who to go to. And then what I would highly recommend you do is you schedule an appointment. If you can, if their offices are open and you go in there and you talk to them and just say, Hey, listen, I want to bring you a lot of opportunities. Do you think that if I open up escrow here you can help me sell this deal to maybe one of your like top buyers that comes through the door that really works well and you know is like a legit buyer do you think you could help me with that at least pass on the information see if they can make some money off of the deals that i find and i am telling you you can just that is just such a great way to have all your bases covered you know if you're going to be doing wholesale I love that. I love the, the finding good buyers trick and someone who's already a good, successful person in the space. They're going to be doing this all the time. They're going to know who's buying. Ryan knows. Ryan knows. There he is. <laughs> awesome. Is Damon available? Damon. Hey, see you jumped in. Damon, you want to jump on? Uh, you're in as a panelist. If you want to join with your microphone and video, would love to see you and hear you. What are you guys doing to these uh, panelists? <laughs> I think Elise is scaring them off. I guess. She's got, she, they're like, oh man, I wish I had that cool of earrings. Those are so awesome. I, I can't mean, even look at myself on camera. <laughs> the man with the fog machine and all the whiteboard and stuff too. Listen, all right, well, I'll, I'll say everybody, but I mean, I got the flamethrower, you know, I got a rhinoceros back there, you know, this, listen, we got it all. You got bananas on the other side. That's right. Those. That's um, right. So Damon's question was, how do you protect your deal from a cash buyer contacting the seller themselves in like saying, steal your deal? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very common thing. And I think that uh, I'm going to do a video on this on the YouTube channel, which is great. But one, first you have to, you have to talk to your seller. Okay. And you need to say, Hey seller, as soon as we uh, agree, as soon as we sign this contract, this is a binding agreement. That means I'm committed to you. You're committed to me. All right. Now that means you can't back out. So I want to make sure that you're comfortable moving forward. And they say, yes. And you go, okay. Now the next thing is once I open up escrow, people are going to find out about it and they might try to come along and try to get you to breach our contract and try to get you to cancel it and work with them. Um, Anybody like that is not to be trusted. They're literally trying to get you to breach a contract. And that could be a serious legal situation. I don't want you to deal with any of that stuff. So if they approach you, you give them my number and tell them to call me. And that's it. So you future pace your, uh, your, your sellers into that and just make sure. Now, is that aggressive to say to somebody after you get a deal signed? Absolutely. But I would rather know upfront right then in that moment, if this seller is going to get wiggly on, on me or not, right? Is, are things getting shaky? Are there, is there turbulence going to be ha happening in this deal? Uh, if so, I want to know right away so that I'm not like, 
oh my gosh, I sold this deal. I'm making 20,000. I've already spent it. I'm going on vacation or I'm investing into the business or I'm paying off my credit cards or I'm paying off my car and you're, you're feeling pumped and you're all excited. And then all of a sudden, you know, the seller, you know, ghosts you and all the, and, and, and you start getting that anxiety and that stress and you start, your eyes start to water when you think about it. And you're just like, Oh gosh, I really hope that this gets to the finish line. No, set it up front. Make sure that you're building that in. And the second thing is if you've got a really big deal, um, first of all, you need to close on it. Okay. I don't care if you're a wholesaler, full-time, whatever, find somebody, there is somebody in your network, somebody in your city, somebody in your town that will finance and fund that deal. Okay. Now, if you have to give them a little bit for that, great. Give them a little bit for that, but close it. Don't blast it out. Don't put it out to anybody because you don't want any chance of that going sideways. All right. I don't want any chance to give you an example. I had a fourplex guys that I had locked up. We were making a ton. We were going to make like $87,000 on this thing. We blasted it out. Oh, we had a real estate agent. That was the best friend of the seller. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what he did. He showed him to the other guy and he's like, listen, you guys got to pay me 50 grand more. I'm not doing this deal. I'll drag this thing out as long as possible. I had to settle at 40. That was, that was, I mean, it's still a great deal, but not as big should have closed it, should have closed it. So close it, own it. And then you can do what you want with it and close it fast. I don't care if there's tenants. I don't care if there's anything, whatever going on, uh, get it closed, get it closed fast and then move on. And then, um, uh, if it's just a normal deal, just make sure that you vet your buyers. And if you find somebody that's on there, that should, that that's acting, uh, like that and going behind your back, remove them. And, uh, and make sure that everybody knows what they've done and make sure that everybody understands that this is a threat to the wholesaling business and they need to be uh, excommunicated. You know what I mean? They need to be blackballed and, uh, and not put on any lists because it's going to happen to other people. And, and that's just gross. So help out the community. Good question though. Absolutely. You'll, you'll see it happen all the time, unfortunately. And so it's, vetting it on the front end, I think is really, really key. I love, love playing. Yeah, but Josh, I also think that, you know, if you think that's going to happen, it's going to happen a lot more. I never think it's going to happen and it never happens. I mean, it happened that one time. Uh, but I mean, but that wasn't somebody going behind, you know, um, that was just, that was just sending it to a best friend of the seller. Unique scenario. Yeah. So, All right. yeah, I'm going to say Tommy is going to be my man here and unmute. And he's going to ask his question. Tommy. Was this a hope? <laughs> this is a hope. <laughs> Tommy Parker, you're on the clock. Quit speaking of on the clock, the draft is going on right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're, gosh. you're an NFL guy or girl at all. <laughs> going on. No, they're not. That's why they're here, brother. That's why they're here. Fair enough. <laughs> Don't remind people. <laughs> oh, that's Tommy, awesome. You unmuted. You there? Not oh, you Tommy. How y'all doing? Got video too. Good. How are you, Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. My question is, uh, hey Brent, uh, everybody. Um, my question is, uh, I had to evict a tenant for a seller, and I was hanging out in the eviction court, and I was wondering, is it uh, illegal or unethical to hang out at eviction court to um, talk to sellers and approach sellers? It's a public space, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, TTP talking right. to people, brother. I mean, uh, why not? I, th I think it's great. I think that you could say, Hey, listen, you know, if you don't want to deal with that property, I'd love to buy it. Right. Then, right. Why not? You know, I mean, unless they, unless there's, uh, unless they're like not letting you do that or they tell you not to, I would try. Right. I mean, okay. Why not? I mean, I think that's I a brilliant wanna, idea. Tommy. Um, I didn't, uh, I didn't know if it would be, you know, a, a problem to approach him in the court building after court. So that was kind of my question. Remember, it depends on how you approach and how tactful, you know, if you just go up and say, Hey, listen, not to bother you, but I buy properties, uh, cash that, you know, sometimes have some problem tenants. If you ever want to talk, give me a call. Right. Right. As okay. opposed to, Sounds Hey, uh, you want to sell that? 
You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. It's the approach. It's the approach that you have and just the way that you just open it up to them and just, hey, listen, I'm here for you. If you want to talk about it, give me a call. Uh, I'd love to give you an offer. Right. Okay. Uh, one more question, uh, Brent. Um, if a seller gives you a number and you don't necessarily know if it's a deal or not, should you lock it up and then try to renegotiate? I never do. Yeah. I okay. mean, some, some people have that strategy, honestly, Tommy, but that's, I don't um, like it, the, just, uh, yeah, the, the issue that you run into there is, um, a lot of people wait until the last minute and then they try to hit the seller with a price reduction. And right. now they've, they've already paid for a moving van. They've got a new property that they're renting or that they're buying. Uh, off, they've got all these plans set up. They've got everything going on. And um, it really, that's when you really, really, really piss people off. And that's when right. they complain to the attorney general. Gotcha. And that's just what it is. And listen, I mean, whatever, um, you know, is that, I don't know. I just think if you go in in the beginning and you, you, you be honest with them and say, Hey, listen, and by the way, I don't mind if you do this. I don't mind if you go, listen, Mr. And Mr. So this is where I'm comfortable buying this at. Okay. If you want this price, I can try this out. I can put okay. this to my network of, of buyers that buy in this area and see if they would buy it. But if they don't, I'm going to let you know within 10 days and we'll either cancel this. We'll tear up the contract or we're going to have to talk about a, a renegotiated price. Is that right. okay? That sounds, that sounds you know, that's good. a lot different than, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that price. And then, Absolutely. you know, 48 hours before you're like, ah, you know what? The numbers just don't pencil. Uh, I'm going to have to like cancel this deal. And they're like, what? Right. And then you're like, well, I would do it, but it has to be 50 grand cheaper or something. Right. It's just dirty. You know, it's just, okay. it's just, it, it causes a lot, a lot of uh, pain in the market. Gotcha. All yep. right. Thanks, Brent. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Great questions, Tommy. Great to talk to you. All right. Thanks, Thanks Tommy. Good. All right. Take care. Awesome. Quick transition here. We already got someone else in. Yeah. And just to answer somebody's question. Yeah. The first step is to get the deal machine app and add properties that are ugly in your, to start out and then just hit the, hit the uh, skip trace button, get the phone number and boom, call them, call them right there in front of the property. I did that with David when he came here. It was great. We were just driving around. He had, he had gotten a Tesla from Turo, that app. And we were just driving around and just clicking buttons, calling homeowners and uh, seeing if they would consider an offer just right in front of their house. Those are some of my favorite videos we've ever done. And it's the fastest and cheapest way to get a deal is do that. Find the drive for dollars list is the best performing list. Skip tracing and just calling them is the best and cheapest way to have that conversation. That's um, it. it. 100%. And so if you're just starting out, that's, that's where we tell people to go. And I will tell everybody, you know, um, and there's been questions about different, different things. Nobody's even close to the functionality and the amount of info and the, and the usability of deal machine. No, no other apps, no other driving for dollars app. it's not even close. I mean, that's why deal machine is deal machine, but it's not even close. And trust me, these guys know, like I only, I only promote and affiliate myself with people that I use the, use their products and I'm only going to use the best things in my business. And it's steel machine. It has been, it has been for years. It has been since 2017, I think. No, 18, 18, early 17. Oh, maybe, maybe you joined on 18, right? I joined in 18. Yep. Awesome. So thank you, Elise. I love you. And listen, that's three years of paying, you know, the, the subscription It's well, we're, it's not, it's not even close to the amount of money that we've made from those leads that we've gotten from driving for dollars. I can't tell you how many of your students too, we talk to and that I love that. I love that they get to share all of that. Well, you go to the wholesaling Inc. podcast and it's like, how'd you get your deal? Oh, deal machine. Oh, deal machine. <laughs> oh, driving for dollars, deal machine. Like, it's like, I mean, this, listen, you know, it they works. Must be working. It works. It works if you do. That's the thing, right? Oh, this, right. Everything here will work if you do. If you work, you're going to be successful. That's it. All of this works if you do. I don't care if you're knocking doors, if you're calling, if you're doing mail, if you're doing whatever. Um, it works if you do. Um, okay. So I want to make sure we get, we're on a roll of, well, getting questions answered. So, uh, I answer Kenny's right here real quick. Yeah, unless, go ahead. Um, unless, uh, Sajan. Sajan. 
is uh, on. But this, how would you, how would you customize a cold calling script for different types of owners? You don't, you don't, you simply call, you ask them, you, you, you uh, ask them, um, uh, you, you make sure that you call them by their first name and you ask them if they would consider an offer. That's it. And then from there, it just opens up. Yes, 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 no. How'd you get my offer? And who are you? That's it. That's it. And then from there, you just roll with it. So don't get too cute. Don't call up and say, hey, um, uh, Mr. Johnson, I believe that your home came up on my computer as a pre-foreclosure and we specialize in preventing foreclosures. And we would love to have a conversation with you so that you, like many of our other satisfied clients, uh, have, have uh, avoided the the stink and, and pain of uh, pre-foreclosure. Don't do that. <laughs> it feels it feels sneak. It feels like, you know, more than they do. Right. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they're on a list. All of a sudden people are calling them. They're already getting calls from the bank and every real estate agent in town and every short sale company in town. And now you're piling on. Listen, they know why you're calling. Be different. Well, OK, so actually, so John's question was, do you lead the phone call and state your company name and give more credibility? And you just answered that. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can. I mean, I don't, you know, when you're calling, I don't suggest when you're calling through a list, unless it's driving for dollars, um, that you leave a voicemail. But if you do leave a voice, if you are calling, you're driving for dollars and it's a smaller list, leave a voicemail and have them call you back and be very specific. Don't be like, hey, I was calling about the property you own. Please call me. Just say, hey, I was calling about the property I believe you own on 1212 Banana Street. Yeah, I'm actually interested in buying a property in the neighborhood and I just wanted to call and see if you would consider an offer. I completely understand if you have no interest in selling right now, but if you could just Call me back. That way I don't keep bugging you. My number is bop, 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 and then uh, leave that. So, yeah. All right, Lewis. Lewis. I want to make sure that. You want to make sure she, you muted yourself in the middle of wanting to make sure. I know. I noticed that. <laughs> I wanted to make sure he knew that he was up here. Lewis, you're up, buddy. Hey, Brent. Nice to meet you, bud. You too. What's going on? Where do you uh, live? I'm over in Lansing, Michigan. I don't know. I haven't, I didn't turn my video on. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Hey, good. To, thanks for being here, man. And thanks for mentioning the draft. Thank God for recording. Um, <laughs> um, I've got just a couple of things real quick. I'm going to start using the app tomorrow. I finally pulled the trigger on it. Um, I'm going to, I just uh, going to sign up for the professional, but I got the, uh, the seven day trial. And I've been driving for Uber for probably seven and a half years. So I've been collecting, you know, talking to people that I drive and been collecting um, zip codes of areas that look, you know, middle, middle class kind of thing. So I'm going to be putting that to you starting tomorrow. But how long does it take you to kind of get used to the app? Because I was trying to, you know, I studied all the instructional videos and I went to the training three or four times. I mean, is it this best learn app applying it? Um, or should there be videos I should be watching before I get, I get after it? I mean, I, we, we learned it, uh, just by using it, Lewis. Uh, okay. so I, I think after, a... after the first, so <laughs> this is great. So I, I, I did an experiment. I put my aunt on it to drive in a, in a market two hours North of us. And she had no, she's not in real estate. She literally got an iPhone like six months ago. Like she had a flip phone, like the whole thing. And it took her about a hundred properties to really get the feel. And then she was like obsessed. She was getting all the badges and the coins and all the awards. And she was like, I, I know I put in a hundred and I didn't get my coins. And she called <laughs> customer service. She really did to make sure. Yeah, it was hilarious. So I think a lot of it is just using it and getting used to it. And also I would encourage you, um, I've got on my YouTube channel, and this is for everybody, um, I've got a virtual driving for dollars 2.0 where you can literally drive for dollars from your watching the draft tonight while you're on your computer and click the button using Google Maps. You can see the properties that, that are rough and you can literally click the map and it'll add it to your deal machine account. Okay. Yeah. I've got your, I got all your stuff so far awesome. that you've put awesome. out there. And yeah. then lastly, I, I keep on pushing my calls to my VA. I still haven't had the cojones to just really, I mean, I was a loan officer for 13 years, top guy at it, but still, I don't know why 
I'm still scared to death to get on the phone and then put the time in that goes along with that. I've got two VAs that have studied everything I have. I mean, too yeah, much. I mean, too much. You know, you know that I have, you know, how to get over the fear of the phone. I mean, it's looking at the cause and the effect. You know what I mean? The effect that you're going to have is you're going to help somebody out. The cause is people you're, you're worried about the cause of people yelling or screaming or just feeling whatever. Or you're just not like feeling the I want to get on the phone and do it. So what I would suggest is one, just understand what you're doing is a noble pursuit. And second, I would make sure that you know the scripts inside and out. And third, I would I would have a five second rule. And this was is what really helped me out because I listen, I didn't order my own food, you know, till I was like 20. 20 years old or whatever, you know, I'd have my parents do it or set up, you know, doctor's appointments and all sorts of things. Right. I would just not, I wouldn't get on the phone. So I kind of forced myself to do the five second rule where if you've got a phone number, like you're pulling in front of a house, you've got five seconds to call that house and you just hit it and you just don't think it because if you let yourself go for too long, you're going to find a lot of reasons why not to press go and to make that call. And it's just hallucinations. You're just hallucinating different scenarios in your head of what might happen. And if you just press it and go, it's like somebody like your best friend putting a phone in your hand, say, Hey, talk to this person. You're like, Oh, okay. That's kind of how I want you to feel with it. And then you're going to get really, really comfortable with it. It's just reps. Well, yeah. listen, dude, I want to say the last thing, dude, yet. I think you ought to put a, a shirt together that says, I want to be Magneto. I love that, dude, what you said <laughs> about, about being a magnet, because yeah. I, tr I had trusted friends. I was trying to share a point of progress, you know, because that's what we're taught to do, to kind of keep going till you, you know, and they told me, I think you're lying, you're delusional, and you're pissing down my leg, you know. Yeah. And I want to be the magnet you're talking about being, yep. dude, in, in a good way, you know, I mean, and I want to be able to watch my sports guilt-free, too. I got to add it. that, okay? That's <laughs> so, it. That's the best. That's a good thanks, life. Thanks yep. a lot. I, I'm going to remember. I want to be a magnet. I like that. I yep. like that. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks you, got for you got it. Awesome. Excellent. We got, I think we got time for maybe one more question. Okay. How do we feel about um, there was a couple other that was going on, but we'll, we'll get into Aaron here. Awesome. Aaron, at least just brought you in. I'm asking. Aaron G. G. Remember, Aaron, guys, over 250, go 65%. Under 250, go 50%. As a rule of thumb, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's going to give you a lot easier way to know if you've got a good opportunity. Absolutely. I, to build on that too, I think one of the really important things of what Brian just said is make it make everything simpler on yourself. And you're going to go out and you're going to find the, what's my offer formula? How do I calculate my assignment fee? Don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about the repair costs right on. Use those quick rules of thumbs. Is it 65 over 65% over 250 of value property based off those really quick to use numbers from Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, or is it lower? Okay. Now I need to be at 50% of the number because yep. it's just going to, allow you to be simple, make it, allow yourself to stay present in the conversation by simplifying some of those background things that you don't need to be trying to calculate everything at that moment. Uh, Elizabeth, by the way, Matt, do you see what Elizabeth said here? She said TTP magnet in the shape of banana. Can we make one of those? Uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. I'm going to, just because I want to be respectful of your time, Brent, I'm going to just read Aaron's question, Yeah, go uh, for it. but he called you B. I'm going to uh, doing a short sale with a seller right now. Uh, and the lender asked for the HUD one. Should I place the contract in escrow to have escrow produce the HUD one? hundred percent. Yeah. They're the ones to do it. You're going to have to, they're going to require everything to go through the escrow company. So um, yeah, get it in there. Now, if you're negotiating the short sale, they, the, the owner has to be represented by a real estate agent. Listen to me has to. All right. So make sure that that gets involved there. Um, and, um, and they walk them through that process. There is, um, God, Nicole Espinoza. If you just look her up, Nicole Espinoza, she has done over 3000 short sales. Her company negotiates these. If you need help with it, I would highly suggest that you reach out to, I think she's the short sale queen.com or the short sale queen on, on, Insta, on Instagram. You can, Nicole Espinoza short sale, just Google it. You'll, you'll find her and, um, and she can help you out with that short sale. Don't do it yourself. 
because I am telling you, it is a fist fight. It is so much brain damage and it's going to really torpedo your productivity because you're going to be stuck doing a lot of things that you shouldn't have to. These guys have a whole staff of people that do that. So I would never think about doing it myself. I would just bring it to her and her company. I love that. I love that to that point, like relying on people's expertise in the space to help. I mean, those deals are going to take months, months and months of time anyways, just rely on people that and pay them for that expertise. Cause it's going to help you work on other deals and get those deals closed at a much higher percentage. Short sale queen is uh, Nicole Espinoza. She's up there. Um, AJ put it under deal machine trainer there, maybe five comments from the bottom. And just if, in case anyone doesn't know what a short sale is, um, a short sale is when the purchase price of the property is lower than the, the value or rather, yeah. sorry. No, you got it. You're, you've got it. They owe more than it's worth or what yeah. you want to buy it for. And so they have to short the amount owed to the bank and the bank takes the hit, not the home homeowner. Yep. Brent did it better than me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's let Brent go. Um, Brent on your side. Yes. How can we, again, reiterate, how can we follow you? What are the best resources to stay in contact with you? And in the end, like how does talk to people, help people help yeah. the people in this call be successful as investors? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, YouTube is a great resource. I, we put out videos every single day. Um, so I do a lot there and I do a live show every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock Pacific standard time. So not morning for half the country. Uh, it's at 10 o'clock Pacific standard time. And it's just an incredible time, a really, really, really solid show. We put a lot of love and work into that. Um, the wholesaling Inc podcast is phenomenal for anybody that's getting in and interested in wholesaling and then talk to people.com or TTP insider, either one, uh, it's going to give you a lot of resources that you can use right away and then um yeah talking to people and then if you're interested when you get to that point where you're interested in getting a coach and mentorship i work one on i, I work like every every one of my um people in my ttp family ttp program gets my cell phone number and uh access to me and uh i gotta reach out to a couple of them right after this but um uh, it's direct access this is it, it isn't something goofy it's not just a you know, Zoom call every other, you know, month or whatever. This is real deal. Um, I love it. I love coaching the, the people that are serious. And uh, so if you're interested in that, you can go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP, wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's awesome. And I've literally sat in Brent's office with him for like 45 minutes. Every 10 minutes, he's like, hey, I need five minutes. I need to talk to my students. And he yeah. says, busts out like 25 texts making sure students who are working creative deals, trying to figure out how to be successful. He's sitting there making it happen. So yep. really heavily endorsed Brent uh, very much so on that front. Love it. As you guys, you guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us and thank you for helping all of our members. See you Thanks. guys. Love you guys. Bye. All right. I'm going to put up a poll for everyone again, uh, just because now we're going to be going into, if you're kind of new to Deal Machine, these are just a couple of questions. Just to figure out how we can help you guys and um, get you into the right place if you're thinking about Deal Machine or if you're wondering if you have the right plan or not. So this is um, a couple of questions we're going to be bringing out. Here's. Yep. Go ahead. Josh. No, no, you go. You tell me when you want to put them out, but I put this one out first for you. No, this is great. Uh, I actually. What's the the one that you threw up just now? Uh, the marketing budget. Marketing budget. Awesome. So uh, what I'm going to ju jump into now, by the way, is an overview of Deal Machine, how we help, what products help the most. As, as Brent obviously talked a lot about, and most people know us for, our driving for dollars technology is best in class. And, and again, what we're really, really well known for. Um, and then in particular, we uh, also have a few other uh, things in the real estate space that we help with. Uh, and so I want to take the opportunity to share what that looks like. What are the different products and services that we have that help? And so knowing where your budget lies helps me prioritize covering the right strategies, the right ways to get in contact with people um, because your budget, as well as a few other questions that we'll ask here throughout, will give us a lot of information to know what recommendations we might make. And so um, again, I know from early on in the process, about 60% of you uh, were Deal Machine members already and about 40% were not yet. Um, so we appreciate you guys coming in. Um, 
from here, like I said, I'm going to go over deal machine really quickly. My goal is to go spend about 15, 20 minutes uh, going over some key elements about the infrastructure that we help with for real estate investors, we do some Q and A, and then maybe demo with just a couple items that uh, people want to see uh, hands on most. So, um, at least anything else you'd add to that or anything uh, right now you want to say? No, just um, ask your questions and we're, oh, Shanita, my girl Shanita's on here. Uh, you guys should check out her video she did with us. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead, Josh. Go away. Go, go, not go away. Go, go away. Uh, all right. See you guys. <laughs> um, again, appreciate you all here uh, and continue to ask questions. I'll do my best to kind of go between questions uh, and uh, what I'm talking about here. Again, just uh, let us know how we can be helpful. Um, so what is Deal Machine? You guys probably know, I mean, Brent just talked about this for a while, um, but in a bigger perspective, we are the number one rated REI technology, which if you look at App Store installs and ratings on both Google Play and the App Store, uh, the number one rated real estate uh, investor app that's out there um, to help investors either start, scale, or optimize an already existing real estate investing organization and business. And so we've got data across the country, a mobile centric tool that's also reflected and mirrored exactly to the desktop version of Deal Machine um, with various tools that help with these four key elements of the real estate investing process. And so from lead generation to finding who, who you should be dealing with, how you should be segmenting and targeting those people. So you're sending them, spending the most marketing and most aggressive uh, investments at the most likely deals that are out there to actually running that marketing and outreach process all the way through the actual acquisitions and dispositions process and running your sales process. We have different tools and products that help with every single step of the way. The other thing that we are is this team. And so you'll see a few of us here, uh, Elise, myself, and AJ. Um, but we've got 42 of us uh, behind everything that you see. Um, and these are engineers, uh, incredibly uh, advanced engineers building the technology, um, success people helping you figure out what products make the most sense to help you grow the business. Uh, and so that's always a, a big thing I like to share is there's a lot of real people behind this helping make this happen for you guys. So who does Deal Machine help primarily is also a way I like to go through this presentation. These are three examples uh, and go ahead and put into chat one, two, or three, which one you identify with most um, because these are every individual here, the type of investor, you got different challenges along the way. You've got people that come to us and say, hey, I am just starting out. I need some infrastructure, but I need a systematic one, two, three step process to follow because I'm starting the business, trying to get to my first deals, my first 20 deals in the, in the first year or two. From there, we get we work with a lot of people who are already doing consistent deals, maybe one, maybe a second deal a month, but they're trying to advance to that three, four, five deals every single month and build an actual business. And then finally, we've got the people who are coming to us and saying, hey, you know what, we're doing maybe 50, 75, 100 plus deals already. We're trying to buy deals lower in terms of acquisition cost. We're trying to go direct to seller. Maybe they're buying on the market. And we're trying to get the best deals that exist. And so a lot of times driving for dollars is the best deals that are out there. But as you grow up, you kind of forget to continue that process. And so these are the three people that we help most frequently. And so would love to know more about who you guys identify with throughout this process. I see a few ones, a few twos. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it kind of gives me, again, some framework on what to talk about. Final thing before I go any further on what we help with. What does it take to be successful? Brent just talked a lot about, about these various things along the way. First and foremost, setting goals uh, where, with an uh, eye to where you are now. It's not realistic to do 100 deals this year if you've never done one. Um, so focus on where you want to go. And most importantly, the intermittent goals this week, next month, the next quarter, the next six months that will get you in, in terms of where you want to go long term. Um, consistency in generating new leads is of the utmost importance. So never let the top of your funnel get stale because you're working active deals. You need to make sure you're bringing new leads and new opportunities into the pipeline while you're working existing ones. That's the number one failure point. Uh, and not necessarily failure, but it's the number one thing that slows growing businesses down. Um, so focus on always generating new leads, filtering and targeting your messaging and really prioritization of your attention. Not every opportunity out or every property out there is an opportunity. As Brent mentioned, six to 9%, I think he said, 
of the real estate market is in distress. That's financial distress. That's physical distress. There's situations that gives investors an opportunity to solve a problem. So focus on that group. And so filtering and targeting those people, repeating your marketing routinely. On average, we see it's seven touch points to get a deal. This is not a, I send one mailer, didn't work out, never going to talk to that property again. It is a repetitive process of routinely staying in front of them over whatever marketing channel or channels that you choose. Uh, it's a commitment to long-term. This is a month and years game, really years game. We're not solving like building a business and, and testing it out in a week or a, or a singular month. We are committed to the long-term. And so knowing that that is a key element of this entire process working uh, and elevating yourself to the point where you can be a, a real estate investor that is solving problems routinely. It takes time and committing to that. And then finally, sales processes. And so a lot of times people are always talking about like, what list did you get this deal from? What list did they, like, did they reach out or were you texting them? Those are all really great and important things that we just talked about. But also having a sales process to talk to that seller, have a conversation, figure out what problem you can solve, make sure you're following up after you have an initial touch point and going on from there. And so following a process is really key to that. All right. So before I get started, any other questions or was there any other questions that popped up uh, that you saw at least that were, that were good? Um, I'm, yes. Yeah, so I did see one that was, do you think by utilizing deal machine, we can forego using other services like prop stream? Great question. Uh, we have a lot of members that do use both. Um, our, in particular, uh, one of our tools, our list builder tool, uh, does a lot of what prop stream does. We also have property owner data. We also have things like comps that I'll talk about later to help you do all the things that prop stream does. So I do see people using both. Um, but Yes would be the answer. I think you can. <laughs> um, can we also drop the next poll, uh, Elise? Uh, I believe there's one asking a little bit about your team size. How many people are doing this with you guys along the way? So the, the real estate acquisitions framework. So those four steps I talked about earlier, there's key products and services that we have that help with each of those steps. So depending on what your core problem is, some people come to us and say, hey, you know, I need, I need everything. I, I'm a beginning investor, so these are all important. Some say, hey, you know what? We've actually got a lead gen figured out. We got a terrible process of marketing and sales for them. So we focus on those things later on. And so these will help you know which products to take a look at to help with your uh, needs in particular. And so first for lead generation, again, what we talk about the most is our driving for dollars app and technology. Uh, we are, we've, over four years now, we've been running the driving for dollars app in the industry. Um, we have everything, one, a mobile app on Android and iOS that helps you go drive for dollars, track your routes. You can add, actually, as of a few, a few months ago, plan routes based off of certain types of property criteria that you're interested in looking at. You're gonna soon be able to actually plan around based off of a specific geography that you wanna be driving. And it's gonna actually map that out for you so that you are not are hitting the key areas that you're really focused on. We have the virtual driving for dollars tool that uh, Brent Daniels mentioned. Um, it is the lowest cost per deal channel that exists. We always see the cost per deal on driving for dollars, even for scaled up companies coming in at 50 to 65% of the, uh, the, their normal acquisition costs. And they're also the most profitable because it's the least competitive list because you're marketing and working a list that no one else has. Um, so that's our driving for dollars technology and the first of two ways that we really help with lead generation. The next key way is our list builder tool. And so list builder is focused on not just for those who maybe are already driving and they wanna have a bigger marketing pool faster, or maybe there's a city that you can't drive in quite yet. Uh, and you want to pull a list of potential properties that you might market to. List Builder actually lets you really quickly into the prop stream question, um, say, hey, there's a certain zip code that I'm interested in all the absentee owners that have high equity, that have owned the property for at least 10 years. And you can instantly see how many are in that area and instantly pull a list down of those properties into your deal machine account, ready to for you to continue researching and marketing to those properties. And so we've got a, a variety of different motivations for those different properties and those different sellers available in List Builder. Um, and then you can also pull lists again, as we mentioned earlier, you can pull a list of those properties. And then if you're using Driving for Dollars as well, you can go drive that list in particular and build and map a route uh, directly for that. Liz, anything key you'd add to our like the list builder or driving for dollars or anything so far? 
Um, I just got to say, I really love um, having both List Builder and Driving for Dollars. I did a video on it only because with the plan routes coming into play, it's really nice to be able to pull a list, but then go and find further pain points with those properties of if they're actually distressed. So that way, you know that what you're, if you're sending mail out, like you're not just sending it to a really nice house that just happens to be vacant or something like that. Um, then I, I really enjoy that just so it kind of also gives me like where I might want to drive and see if there's other properties around it. If there tend to be a lot of vacant houses in one area. Absolutely. Um, I agree. I think we know that the stress is the number one indicator of a good opportunity for a seller, physical distress of a property. Um, and when we can verify that with any list that we're getting to see the property that is, that is also distressed, so incredibly valuable data point for us to know that on the get-go. List Builder is not free. It's a separate tool. I'll go over pricing uh, after uh, these next few things here, just so everyone has a barometer for what the different costs of different products are and how to select the one that matches based off of where you are at uh, in your journey as an investor. Um, so jumping over to the next element of, of Deal Machine that we help with. So after you've pulled lists, you've gone driving, you've maybe pulled the list and then gone driving to begin to have even more niche list of really important criteria on these properties with that distress thing. You, that's the beginning of this process of stacking properties with various motivations. Because again, our goal is to spend our, the most of our time and effort on the properties that are the most likely to sell to an investor. And so filtering and targeting allows you to organize those types of properties with multiple motivators into a list that you could say, hey, you know what, if I'm going to do direct mail, that top 20% that have like five motivators or three or four really key motivators and they're distressed, I'm going to send a marketing piece every two to three weeks with those. Lists. Now, if it's an owner occupied, but a little bit distressed, but still owned for a long period of time, owner occupied are less likely to sell to an investor. I still want to market to it because I know it's distressed. Maybe I hit them every two months with a direct, with a direct mail piece. Um, and so it begins to allow you to segment and organize your properties into the priority. So you're still marking everyone that's relevant, but you're focusing most of your time and attention to the best opportunities that you can uh, potentially take down at, as an investor. The next key uh, thing going on from filtering and targeting. So after you've refined these lists in Deal Machine, you've got all your leads, you've got your various lists that you're wanting to market to. We help you reach out to these people. And we do that really in three ways. One. We have skip tracing built right in. And so you could be out in the field driving for dollars, like Brent mentioned, you add the property and immediately you can skip trace, get their phone number and start calling them instantaneously from their driveway. We actually have a video with, uh, remind me who it's with at least his name is escaping, Q. Quentin. Quentin Flores. Um, he was doing exactly what Brent mentioned. He was demoing deal machine, driving in his car, called the very first property he called got a hold of the seller, got a deal, got it under contract an hour and a half later. Um, so we, it's literally on video. You can go check it out. You can reach out to Q and ask if it's real. It's very, very real. Um, so it's very, very powerful, like Brent said, to start talking to these people right away. Uh, and so our skip tracing gives you those phone numbers instantaneously on an individual level right there on your phone. And then we also even take skip tracing a level further to give you as much extra data about these numbers that we can. So we scrub it against the do not call us. We scrub it against the known litigators list. We look to see if the number's already disconnected because sometimes there's old data that will still come through with a lookup. And then we also look at, is it landline? Is it mobile? Is there a caller ID associated with it? So do you, maybe it's the partner of the property owner that you, that you looked up. So you could know, hey, this looks like a partner as opposed to the individual. So when you call that person, you already know who you're gonna be reaching out to. Stacy has a really good question about that, um, asking if there's a place to make notes on the lead. So yeah. if you called them and you didn't reach them, is there a way to make notes? Two key things on that. Um, one, yes, under every single lead, there's an activity and notes section where you can free write notes. Well, whether you're driving and you see a property and you want to remember something unique about it, you could jot a quick note about the property or what, if you cold call someone or someone calls in, you can jot a note about that conversation that you had. We also are about to come out with tasks, uh, which if you're using Deal Machine already, um, you know that we don't have a task list as of today. 
Uh, I believe the release date is going to be Tuesday and rolled out next week in the days following that. And so keep an eye out because quite literally within a week from today, you're going to be able to track tasks and give yourself a list that every single day you're going to know, here's the 25 properties I have to cold call today. Here's the ones for tomorrow. Okay, now this one called in. Now I got to follow up again. You're going to be able to schedule a new task and manage it, assign it to other types of team members. So if you have someone to come in and you need to give them responsibilities, you'll be able to do that as well. And the coolest part about these tasks, this is layer one of a significant framework adjustment to where we're going with deal machine. Eventually you'll be able to see automations of tasks, um, workflows that you could build like a touch campaign between direct mail, a cold call reminder, all the different, a, a task to a driver to go drive a specific geography. All of these things are being built into that task framework that we're releasing first version one next week. Um, so I tried to actually get a demo version of Deal Machine uh, and the guy that needed to give it to me did not get to me in time for this demo. So I don't have them to show you, but Elise and I worked within it today and saw it today. And so it's gonna be awesome. It's coming, I'm super excited. It's gonna make everyone's lives a lot easier. Um, yes, hands up. Uh, the answer, right? And I, I don't know if I got how to pronounce your name correctly, or Rado or Rado. Um, the goal is for Deal Machine to be able to be your own standalone CRM. And I think uh, really, again, I work with our enterprise members that are doing two, three, four, five plus deals a month. And a lot of times it's a question that we're, that we're asking it. And as of today, I think, especially with the tasks that we're releasing, I think get for the beginner investor up to like two to three people, we're really good and well set up to be a complete CRM to manage this whole process. Really, these are, I mean, this is your CRM right here. These four things that happen, these are the things that will happen routinely and over and over again. Um, and so that's a, a great, great question. Um, two, three more things to go through in the framework here. Uh, we do direct mail. Uh, most of you probably already know that. Uh, this is also about to get overhauled. Another cool thing. Um, literally two days ago, uh, Dave, our CTO, one of our co-founders, has been redeveloping the infrastructure of our campaigns, as well as adding more mailer types and totally custom mail options where you have a wizard that you can drag and drop and build whatever you want on a template. All of these things are coming Um these are probably a late May, early June type launch on the, the campaigns and mailer redo, um, but it's super slick and even easier for our members to use. The feedback so far has been really, really great. Um, oh, I missed, I don't have the SMS uh, slide for some reason here, but we also do SMS marketing. Uh, so we have an entire technology built around building your uh, text messaging, marketing, um, being able to add properties, skip trace in, in bulk rapidly and send off text message individually really, really quickly to all of your prospects. And so you'll be able to, again, the example earlier, if you skip trace someone while you're driving, get their phone number, it's a mobile phone number, you could launch a text to them in instantly. Or if you've got a thousand people you're trying to message, we set it up so you're fully legally TCPA compliant. So you're not breaking any laws and how you're reaching out to these, these prospects. Um, it has to be like one click to every send one text. You can't ever have a click to send like 30 texts. Um, that's illegal. And so we built the whole system. So you don't have to worry about the legal side. You're just focused on marketing um, and focus on the deals are, that are at hand. Final uh, couple things on this framework. The sales pipeline, acquisitions and dispositions, comps, and a property, uh, a property promotion page that's also coming here in May as well. And so first of all, the sales pipeline, already you have the ability to track the status of leads in your system. So if someone's actively being marketed to, they're in a with marketing status. If that marketing campaign ends, they'll go to marketing complete. Or if you're in a follow-up stage, or if you've got an appointment set or they're under contract, you can track all of your opportunities and keep track of where they are at in that pipeline of the acquisitions and dispositions process. Now, the cool part on top of this, again, we've, we've had those statuses for a while, but the things that we're adding on top of this, the call notes section, notes have already existed, but the, ta the task that we just talked about is going to make it even easier to keep track of the important deals in your pipeline that you need to be working on a day-to-day -day basis. The comps add-on came three weeks ago, at least, maybe a little bit more than that. So you're actually able to, every single property we have, go ahead. Elise. I was going to say it. I mean, it's been out for about two months now. Two months. 
Time flies. Time flies. <laughs> um, so you're able to run comps dynamically on the fly for any property in your system. As soon as you add it, the comps, I have the comps, actually the GIF running here for you. So you can see the subject property, quickly look at the other properties that are comparable based off the square footage, bed, bath, all that. And it shows you instantly where those properties are, what those sold for and when they sold. So if you're sitting in the room with a seller and saying, hey, like this is why my offer is this, or if you need to find that number rapidly for yourself, all the data is available right there instantaneously, literally takes a couple seconds to get it. Um, so the follow-up tasks, the property marketing pages, these are also, I think, gonna be an absolute game changer for anyone using Deal Machine for wholesaling in particular. So as soon as you get a deal, you get under contract, you change the deal status to a, a deal that's under contract, we are gonna let you build a marketing webpage for each individual property that you have. And you can say, this is the property I have for sale. This is my asking price. Here's all the details about it. We already added the ability to have multiple photos for properties. So you can add all the photos that you have about this property. You can put the comps into that page. There's gonna be a live form for buyers to fill out and say, hey, I'm interested in buying this. Here's my offer price. Contact me or, or let's have a conversation about scheduling a walkthrough. And so you're gonna be able to do all of that Within seconds of getting that property or contract, you could have a live web page with all the relevant important details for your buyers, literally in 30 seconds, launched, ready to go, and you can send a text message instantly to, with someone with a link to a, to a buyer um, on that. And so super excited about that to make the dispositions process that much easier and help our members be extremely professional investors in front of their buyers so they can show them a really professional view and perspective on the types of properties that they're offering them with all the details that they need right away. Um, so keep an eye out for that. That's again, another May update um, coming on that. And so two things I want to do now, uh, take any other questions that are available uh, or that people have right now rather, and then go over pricing a little bit and uh, anything that people want to see in the application itself in terms of a demo. Yvonne asked if we are starting new, do we need a website? Need? No. Um, you can definitely have a website uh, if you want to, but uh, it's one of those things that I think people get caught up on, like having the business cards, having the logo, having the website. None of those are necessary for you to go driving, pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, I want to buy your house. It's Wouldn't the action. You? None of that is necessary. All of it is action oriented. Our goal is so we want people to learn and be educated along the way. And we, that's why we do this content. But we want someone who says, I want to get into real estate investing today. If they made that decision today, they could start today. They could literally sign up in 15 minutes, go driving, begin building a lead list, begin talking to people about buying a property. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. So... Any, any hands raised or anything like that? There are a couple of hands raised. Give me a couple of hands. I want to I wanna talk to some people. I talked oh, to you. All right. I, all right. I like Who to talk says, to people. Right? We got Ava coming up. Ava. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can tell this is the most like energy I'm feeling right now off of you. <laughs> Josh is so excited to talk to you. We're so excited to talk to you. I just, I asked you to unmute and see your wonderful face. See, Josh, you took him for surprise. I did. It was, it was, it was quick. It was out of the blue. While Ava's getting, getting going, um, any other like, keynotes or things that you think you want to make sure people know about Deal Machine, Elise? Um, big thing is I know I've been, AJ's been dropping this um, link in there, but our trainings are free. And I highly recommend if you are looking to go, even if you're like, oh, I figure it out on my own, I'm fine. Go to one of the trainings, it's free. You talk to a real life person um, and they get to, you know, you get to talk to either Dakota or Dan or sometimes Josh and you guys get to actually talk to see, we wanna help you find the best plan for you. And we're not gonna be all like salesy of like, that's actually in our statement, our mission, our vision statement that we do not be salesy. We want to be able to help you guys get what you need and what's going to work best and make sense for you guys. And actually the polls that are going to be coming up, um, that actually will 
you guys will be able to answer some of those where Josh can kind of help guide you when he talks about the plans. So, um, okay. Yeah. Ava. Ava. Hi. Hey. hey. Quick question. Thank you guys for picking me. Thank you. Quick Absolutely. question. I'm in an area where I see a lot of building owners that have um, signs for sale. How, how do I approach them? Call the numbers if they have their sign. If they have the numbers on the sign, call them and ask what, what do you want for the property? It sounds like you're interested in selling um, and figure out what they, what they want for it. I, the, really the process for that opportunity doesn't change all that much. Um, you're still, you have someone that you already know wants to sell the property. Uh, and so you're, you're going into it with the same conversation. And now uh, is it, is it all residential still and like a single family? Yeah. Home? Okay. Yeah, residential buildings. And then for sale by owner type situations? Yes. Absolutely. So those are oftentimes some of the best and most obvious opportunities that exist for us because we they're raising their hand and saying, hey, like, why, I want to have a conversation with someone that wants to buy. Um, so your process doesn't change all that much. It's starting the conversation, say, hey, I saw you might be interested in selling. What was it that you wanted for the house? Why are you selling it? It seems like an awesome house. Um, go through that same process. Brent Scripps, I think, will do a better job than I can ever do on some of the key questions there and uh, open up that conversation. I will but say that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Ava, I want to tell you a legit thing that happened when I was walking with David, our CEO, we saw one of those for sale by owner signs. And David just was like, Hey, I need to stop here and take a picture. He took a selfie with the for sale by owner sign. And then he texted the guy, but by that number, cause it's usually cell phones nowadays. And, um, he actually got a conversation with the guy and got him to tell him like how much he wanted for the property and stuff. So that's like a fun way of getting their attention. And you know, they see your face too, which I think is really important because they're like, oh, she looks lovely. You know, yeah, that yeah. sounds cool. I think I should do that. <laughs> I'll say this too. Getting into this process, cutting your teeth on as many conversations with sellers is how you will learn and get more comfortable. I know that the, some of the people that I know that have five to 10 person acquisitions teams, when they hire a new acquisition manager who's responsible for getting deals in a contract, they don't give them a lead for a month. They say, you need to go call, I don't care what city in the country it is. They literally say, you need to go find for sale by owners, go to Craigslist, find people who have a for sale by owner and have a conversation with them. And they make them do that for a month before they give them a lead because they're going to learn more about that process and gain confidence in it and know how to work that conversation by doing it more and more. You need to, having thousands of conversations means that thousand first conversation is so much easier than the first. And so you're just trying to cut your teeth on conversations. And that's what I got to do. Make that conversation happen. You got this. You let us know when you do, okay? Indeed, I will. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Good night. All right, Josh, you want me to put up the next um, poll? The question? Yeah, let's do another poll. And then let's do another, if anyone else has a question, I, I think I saw another hand raised. Okay, so um, this is a really good poll to have for, especially with the plans, knowing how big your team size is, because then um, the different plans will make sense for you. Yes, absolutely. Knowing where you're at in terms of deal count and how big your team is will make it so much easier to know like where to start. Uh, and again, uh, that along with budget is... Oh, I'm sorry, this is number of deals, but that also is good too. The then you know, the like, previous one. So we got the previous one too, and it was mostly one to two people. Um, I saw, I don't know the exact results right now. Um, looks like a lot all those zeros to exactly. one plus. <laughs> one plus is the first. Again, we're setting goals. Step one is one plus. Um, absolutely. Um, so a lot of people hunting down their first deals are really their first five, six deals. They're in that, in that stage of the game. Um, so really our goal, again, like, like Brent said earlier, driving for dollars, skip tracing, calling them as soon as you can. Um, the number of leads it does take is going to vary market to market. Brent mentioned 300. That's a good average across the country. Now, if you're in downtown LA working really competitive areas with $500 million properties, that's a different market than working in an area, let's say with $150,000 properties in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, where I'm from originally. And so you're going to see a range of maybe in super rural areas of low value properties where it might take a hundred deals and to, or leads to find a deal. Whereas some of the bigger ones might take 750 to a thousand 
again, just depending on the market that you're in. And again, I know one of the reasons I like to go through the, the framework is because your conversations with people matter. Like, how do I actually diagnose that this is an opportunity to go through the process, follow up? All of those things are just as important as getting the lead to the table to have the conversation. Was there someone else that had a, that wanted to come up for a, a question at least? Yep, Bruce. We got Dave on deck. Was that a yep, Bruce? That was a yep, Bruce. We're over here at Deal Machine being <laughs> Carney. <laughs> uh, Dave, what uh, what question uh, do you have for us? Jump on if you're uh, you're still available to. With all the updates, uh, I guess the fees remain the same. Uh, fees that have changed over time uh, depends on when you uh, when you join. I, actually, as of now, all of our members are in the same fee structure um, for the different plans that you have. And so, um, some of the things that we're adding, like tasks, tasks aren't shifting. Uh, every member that we have at Deal Machine is getting those features. Um, the sales page, I believe, everyone will be able to do at least one uh, sales page at a time. And then, if you want more, there it might be an add-on or something like that. Uh, transparently, there's some decisions that haven't fully been made on that front, um, and we'll continue to communicate as best we can as we release the new features, who, how it's uh, purchased, if, if it's purchased or if it's given, um, and do our best to keep you guys informed on that. Thank you. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the question, David. Uh, let's see one more, uh, Leonard, I saw Leonard raise his hand. I'm going to hit allow to talk. I got it. Got it. All right. No, you got to promote I, I, the professionals here, Josh. Okay. All right. Leonard. Oh, hey. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, uh, <clears throat> so my question is, I have four people right now that saw my team that I, uh, basically have driving for me, but you know, of course, you're going to get, have, I have the um, professional package. Mm -hmm. You know, you only can have two people in the seat and I'm always going to be one. So do you think at a time where um, more people might get added on for the lower packages? I wouldn't transparently anticipate that. Uh, I think the, the number of team members will probably stay consistent on the packages that you have. One thing I do want to note, um, so you've got four people on your team. Is that including yourself or was it you plus four in total? Uh, that's me plus four. You plus four. Okay. So your professional plan actually allows for two drivers, which we call deal finders in the app in certain spots and two full access features. So you could actually have up to four people capable of having deal machine and going driving for dollars with the technology, with that professional plan that you're on. You guys are going to be able to add up to a thousand leads a month uh, via that process as well. Um, so I think what Leonard's saying is that he's having to like switch people out. Is that right, Leonard? Correct. Correct. I have to change the person who's in the seat because if a person is not in the seat, I'm always one, but for the second person, I have to switch them whenever they're driving. Right. And I just wanted to make sure we, you can get up to four. So yes, there would be a, a fourth person here, but you had said two drivers earlier. So I just wanted to be, make sure we were clear that there was up to four people that that pro plan could support and it wasn't just two, uh, two drivers. And so you would okay. have to them on and off if you wanted more than the four, or obviously that's what our enterprise plan is designed for um, as an option as well. Correct. Okay. Well, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. Um, so running out of time here, uh, really quickly, I'm going to run through the pricing. Uh, on, on Deal Machine, on the different products that we have today, and then um, let people go from there. Um, so as we talked about most through most of this time, we've got our Driving for Dollars technology. Um, driving for Dollars is the software designed to help you go out into the streets, drive, add properties that you see, take photos, go through that whole process. So we've got our basic pro and enterprise level plans. You can purchase them annually or monthly. There's a little bit of a discount if you do pay annually. Um, and so our basic version is really designed for you plus one additional driver. Uh, $59 a month lets you add up to 500 leads a month. And so a lot of times that's kind of the starter option for people. They're just getting started. They're focused on getting out like Brent said earlier, go out and find 100 deals, 100 deals a week. Um, focus exactly on that person to give them 
the number of properties that they need to start having those conversations and get to the point you're doing one to a couple of deals every single quarter uh, as you begin to build that business. Um, the pro plan lets you go up to a thousand. And like we just said, up to a total of four people can be on that account driving. Um, and then finally, we've got our enterprise plan. All of our enterprise plans, there's two things to note. One, they're only charged annually. We don't uh, allow our enterprise plans to be purchased on a month to month basis because of the longevity of the, of the commitment built going into building the, the business, building a team to go driving for you and getting the routine marketing processes in place. And so that lets you add up to 10,000 leads a month. Most of our members are probably doing two to, two to 5,000 a month. And those are the ones that are coming to us and saying, you know what, I want to get two deals each and every month and then eventually get to three, four and five. And so enterprise really allows them to add the volume of leads routinely that they need to make that happen. There isn't also a thousand dollar onboarding fee that comes with our enterprise plans because we do have uh, a full four person customer success team dedicated just to our enterprise customers. So you get full, fully dedicated onboarding. We show, we do like a full, full demo for your team to walk you through implementing it. If you're using this with our systems, we show you how to integrate that. We show you what processes you need to follow to be able to have the results that you're looking for. And then we do quarterly check-ins and annual reviews on your account as well. And so you get some sophisticated mentorship guidance and support uh, in that process by being an enterprise member of Deal Machine as well. Um, and so that's our enterprise plan. It also lets you add up uh, essentially an unlimited number of drivers. It's technically limited to 300. Um, I think we've had one person ever hit it and they had a lot of inactive drivers. So typically um, it's not an issue. It's basically just lifts the limit that you have on the driver count uh, on that regard. Um, I see a question from Scott here. Scott Novak. Can you promote him, Elise? I got, I got chastised last. Yeah, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't show up on my thing. I'm so sorry, Scott. I think he just, he like literally just showed up. So. <laughs> hey, Scott. Oh, how are you doing? Hey, Scott. Yeah. How you doing? Uh, my video. Hi. Uh, well, um, I I have a very um, specific question. So, I right now um, I'm more into um, calling mm -hmm. people than um, than uh, sending letters. I was wondering if you have any kind of integrations with popular uh, dialers such as Mojo Dialer. Would that would that fit in with your system? Yeah, absolutely. So two ways you're going to get the data into Mojo and streamline that process to a dialer. Uh, one, we are on Zapier. Um, so if you're familiar with it, basically an app that lets other online applications work with each other. And so every time, for instance, you add a deal or skip trace with us, you can automatically have that data sent over to your Mojo dialer. So it's in a list ready to go. Or you can also just export all of your leads and the data associated with them. So the phone numbers and the owner details, the property details to a CSV file that you can then upload uh, into your Mojo dialer. And so I would say last night, we did a survey actually of members and 65% of our members are using a dialer of some kind. Um, and so they all, that process worked really, really easily and well. Um, I would expect we'll probably look at a dialer and building one. Um, early 2022, maybe a little bit earlier than that. Um, it's definitely just because we know it's such a huge need for all of our members, but absolutely we make it super easy to integrate into that process. Okay, okay, Zapier, I'll, I'll look into that. Thank you. Absolutely, thanks for, thanks for asking the question, Scott. Awesome, so I'm gonna jump into list builder real quick, and then I think end the call if there's no final questions that we've got. Um, so List Builder, as we talked about earlier, separate product from our Driving for Dollars system um, and is designed to help you pull this quickly uh, into your system so you can build your leads faster. Now, you're going to need a lot more leads from List Builder than from Driving for Dollars to get deals typically because that distress variable isn't known. And again, that's one of the best indicators that a deal is going to be sold to an investor. So our basic List Builder plan starts at $59 a month. It lets you pull in 4,000 leads a month into your system that you can begin marketing to uh, all instantaneously. You can use um, all of the different motivators that we have. You can build as many lists as you want right now. Uh, it's just, you can pull a total of 4,000 a month to be able to do that. Um, the pro plan allows you to pull up to 10,000 a month. Uh, 
Um, and again, essentially, uh, as many lists as you want, the same motivators are all available there. And then finally, our enterprise level plan for a list builder allows you to pull an unlimited number of leads. So if you're getting really aggressive, maybe going after multiple markets um, or pulling lists really regularly for your drivers to go drive and be coordinated to, uh, Enterprise List Engine lets you do that really, really well. Um, and again, so the, the, you save 20% uh, anytime you go to annual or 17% rather, anytime you go annual versus monthly. Um, final tool we have, uh, I almost forgot this one, uh, is our SMS marketing tool. Um, I always want, especially recently, like to give caution on building your whole business around SMS marketing. We expect some heavy industry changes coming to SMS in the coming two to three or four months. Um, the carriers are basically telling people without having fully committed to it, to it yet that they are not going to allow people to send texts through their platforms, through their networks, unless they've gotten an opt-in from the recipient before that text goes out. And so that essentially will disallow and discontinue from SMS marketing from working in the real estate space. And so right now, it's, it's not a legal issue either for Clarity 2. It's the networks just changing their um, essentially roadblocks in the way. Um, so we, we're basically telling people, go full bore, be aggressive. SMS marketing does work now. It's the lowest cost per deal channel that we do see. Um, it lets you market to many people really rapidly at, at, as, at a far lower cost than, for example, um, direct mail to reach out to these volume of people. Um, but again, it could go away. So don't build your whole business on this because there's a high risk where you might build this whole process that's working really well for you, you and then it might go away and all of a sudden you're starting from scratch again. Um, so the three options that we have are basic professional and professional plus. Um, they allow you to start 6,000 active new conversations a month, 12,000 new ones a month, and then up to 30,000. And so typically what we find is someone wanting one to two deals will typically go on that basic professional level. And someone wanting to do two, three, four deals a month uh, will oftentimes be on that professional plus so they can be interacting with 30,000 people each month about their properties. Um, so those, uh, these are our prices obviously. So it's always available on dealmachine.com forward slash pricing. Uh, if there's any questions at all, um, uh, final questions, we would love uh, to help. Again, one thing I would say is, uh, uh, at least just threw up the poll for us here and I appreciate it. Um, I do run the enterprise business at Deal Machine. And so uh, part of that is we have people on my team who are responsible for helping you explore if enterprise is the right solution for you. And so if you're interested, if you're saying, hey, like, you know what, in the next 30 to 60 days, like I need to make a decision on if enterprise is right for me, um, whichever enterprise plan that is, um, let my team reach out to you and have a conversation about that um, because we want to help get you on, onto the plan that makes the most sense. I'll, I'll, I'll say this too, really transparently, 50% of the time we're telling people, you know what, we appreciate that you have interest in enterprise, but basic is really what you need right now. If you're just starting out and your budget's 200, 200 bucks a month, that's the, pre, the plan that you need and, the, and you need to focus on skip tracing and cold calling people. Enterprise people have typically a little bit of a bigger budget and they're more aggressive on where they're at in terms of the number of deals they're trying to do really rapidly. Um, and so if you do wanna have a conversation, if you say yes here, I will have someone on my team reach out to you for a conversation and explore what plans make the most sense for you. Let me check chat real quick. Any other questions that had popped up that we wanted to discuss, Elise? Um. No, I think that we, I really appreciate you guys being on here, all 61 of you, because uh, I know this was a long night, but I hope that you got a lot of nuggets out of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, a lot of people are asking if this was going to be replayed. It is going to be on our YouTube channel on Monday. Um, AJ's been posting the channel link, so just follow us there. And I know I'm a little biased, but we have a really good video coming out in about 10 minutes. That's um, our videographers doing the chip challenge and it's pretty hilarious. Plus also you get to like know them and see them from behind the, from in, from behind the camera, they have come. So um, I just really giving, showing them some love because they do a lot for our team. So, um, but yeah, oh, hey TJ, all right. I love seeing a lot of you that have been here for a while. So we just appreciate you guys so much.
Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you hanging out. Um, go enjoy the rest of your evening and happy deal finding. Happy deal finding. <laughs>